All right, everybody, what is going on? And welcome to the newest episode of Smack Talk. Uh, as you can see today, I am wearing a basketball t-shirt, not because I'm absolutely massive and want to show off my absolute guns. The, what guns would these be? Probably water pistols, yeah. Probably fair enough. Or spud guns. Oosh. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's another, I don't know, every Saturday I go sit down and do this and the sun just decides it's going to split the sky and beam down on me when I'm sitting in this room and it's so warm, so... If you're watching, apologies for this. <laughs> but yeah, without any further ado, we'll get into it. So, usual start off, what I get up to this week. I went basically with my girlfriend to a place called Glen Hour Forest Park and Waterfalls. Little did I know in Northern Ireland, we actually have waterfalls in places. Like, you go to foreign countries and stuff and they'll be like, oh, come see the waterfall. And they're just a wee miserable trickle of a thing. And it's like the waterfall. But these are actually impressive. I probably have photos here for you somewhere. And... We went, and I didn't really know what to expect because it was kind of an overcast cloudy day, and I'm not a water person. Uh, I get incredibly nervous when other people get in water because my job literally is to ensure that people are safe in water. So I'm like, if something goes wrong here, I know fine right and my girlfriend's going to be like, you, go, you deal with this. And there is a great difference, as I explained last week, between being a pool lifeguard and being an open water lifeguard. One main thing's being, the water's freezing and I don't want to get in. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool so we went anyway and we got to the big waterfall and I just turned on bitch mode like I don't do water I'm happy enough to be like yeah no not getting in it's freezing I'll be walking around in wet clothes for a while but there's this young couple there and they're sort of getting in and messing with it. I was like oh you know what like I've come this far I may as well get in so I may as well just choose the video that I have so if I go into here let's right. see so I go up to the water I'm sliding in and instantly just start going <gasps> Literally about today, uh, for boys that are watching this, which I'm pretty sure this is all males, it literally just crawled back up inside me and was like, why would you do this to me? And you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> it was absolutely freezing. Well, a generous term would be monkey nut. Yeah, we'll go with monkey nut. That was absolutely god awful. But yeah, so that was at the waterfalls. Really nice place. Would really advise if you is around here to go up and do it because it, it was good. Uh... But absolutely freezing. And even if it is a sunny day, you're kind of trapped underneath like a load of cloud and stuff, like the trees and stuff. And you just have these random like people coming down to look at you and you're in the waterfall and basically ruining their photo. But not my problem. <laughs> not my problem. The other thing I was doing this week was, uh, unfortunately, I watched the Premier League. Moment of silence, please. Because... <sighs> I, told, I called it, I literally said it last week, I was like, I'm looking forward to come back, I'm not looking forward to come back because I support Arsenal and we're going to get slapped. And sure, surely enough, it happened. But actually, we watched the first game, actually, we'll start to start. I also said last week how they put on, who was it, Chef, Aston Villa and Sheffield United, and by God, did that game not disappoint. My God, the worst game of football ever. I said at the time again, just expectations low, it's going to be useless. Why would you put that game on first? Mind-boggling stuff. And yeah. At the time we were watching the game, and Joe and the keeper, the keeper caught the ball and went back over the line, and I literally was screaming at the TV, and I was like, that's a goal. Like, that's a goal. And the boys are something like, well, there's watchable buzz of those goals. Goes, the ball crossed the line, like, you can clearly see it. But yeah, man, like, I cannot believe that they're that stupid where they can't use because the goal line technology is run by one company and VAR is run by a different company not, they're not allowed to talk to each other they're not allowed to sort out of issues that one has with the other so major issue there like and god I'd feel so hard done by and then we had the spectacle that was the Daffodil Louise show uh, the <laughs> evening time first 20 minutes as an Arsenal fan sitting there going you know what we're not we're not losing this is going pretty well and then we get two injuries and Saito Ball comes on as he does I'm not a football pundit, so I'm not going to get into the whole, like, as if I know what I'm on about, but, oh my god. It just puts me in bad form. It really, really does. If you just could see me after every time that sort of stuff happens when I, when you're an Arsenal fan, like, <sighs> I got back to my girlfriend's house that night, and she's just like, look, what's wrong with you? I was like, just don't even, don't speak to me. <laughs> oh, he's just the absolute worst. How on earth... Is he a professional footballer? That's what I love to know. I used to get on Jordan Henderson's back a lot. I used to always say, he is still in the living as a footballer, but put him up beside that Louise and that is a joke. You could have threw me in centre-back or my dad in centre-back and we probably would have done a better job. Just 
nuts. So yeah, kick off for this will be live. So bold prediction now. We're gonna say Arsenal. I'm gonna go for a generous win. Maybe a scra- scrappy one 0 or something against Brighton. Please God. And if it's wrong, I'm gonna look like a tube. So do not let me down like he's always do. God, it was tough. Tough, tough, tough days. But yeah, uh, I've got a couple of current events and stuff that I'm going to get stuck into here. So let's just see here what the first one is. The... Oh, yes. So the first one is... This is the headline, published by none other than the wonderful Cool FM of Northern Ireland. And it reads, People are putting Cheerios in a blender to make edible sand for kids. This is the worst bit, and it's genius. Making edible sand is now genius. Forget getting the cure for the pandemic that's going on now. Forget reinventing the Tesla cars or inventing microchips that goes into people's brains. Putting Cheerios into a blender to make edible sand for kids is genius. Why on earth? Like, why would you want to even confuse? Like, the, the whole point of the article here is I'll read a wee bit of it because it just mind blew me. Uh, The most recent hack to do the rounds was called, was by a mum, blah, 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 who made some edible sand for her young children using popular breakfast cereal Cheerios. If your kids are into arts and crafts and <laughs> sensory play, but are too young to understand they can't eat sand, this is perfect for you. Now, here's the thing. You should never encourage your kid to eat sand, even if it's edible sand. Why on earth are you telling your child to eat sand? Like... Surely, and even if they have like some sort of like learning disability, it's only going to teach them when they get to the beach to munch the sand down when they get there. Like how then they're just going to be confused because well, like I need this sand, but I can't eat this sand. Like yeah, so there, you, there you have it. Genius, absolutely genius, to feed your children sand. There'll be so the next thing. We'll be making. They'll be eating sand castles and whatnot. Like you don't want your child to be eating sand. You just don't. Ridiculous. The next one is. Uh, this was quite a big one that went around so it's this this video that went around on tiktok and it was named i take responsibility.org i'm sure most people have seen it now but i'll play a wee clip of it for those that haven't i take responsibility i take responsibility i take responsibility i take responsibility for every unchecked moment for every time it was easier celebrities let me just uh let me just do my bit here hold on <laughs> i take responsibility get a get the get out of here who wants to listen do you think there is some there is black people in this world sitting there that are being racially abused, murdered, that are sitting there being like, I'm so glad. I'm so grateful that these celebrities have sat down and said that they take responsibility. That's amazing. This is all we've needed. Just let's stop the riots. Let's stop everything else. This is what we need right now. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody gives a shit what celebrities have to say anymore. It's obviously nonsense. Why? Who thought this was a good idea? It just goes to show you how far out of touch these people are. And it actually has made me mad at how stupid it is. Because... They're, they're all actors. This is what they do. You just sit down. <laughs> I take responsibility. I do. Get uh, No. Absolutely mad how they thought this was a good idea. And they should honestly, honestly hang their heads in shame. I can't believe the video still exists. I can't believe they've still sit, left it sitting there. You could do so much more as a quote-unquote celebrity. But yeah. Oh, God. What a bunch of wet wipes. The other big news this week is that the pubs and bars are reopening. Insert. Yay. Nice. Now, this is brilliant and this is great because for me it means we should be able to get back to comedy pretty soon. However, personally for me, am I going to be rushing to sit in a bar on the 3rd of July? No. No. Um, you're just going to get every smacked out lunatic in the bars. And as much as I am not that worried about the cold coronavirus thing, like you're just going to get people over the top of you, like 
not abiding by the rules because you know everyone knows themselves like you go into a shop people can't even abide by the rules and stuff like just stay a wee bit away from people and whatnot like if you're there and you're sitting at a table with your friends that's all fine well and good but it's just gonna be a mess it's the same as mcdonald's like who the hell is queuing for mcdonald's dead open like you can you've waited this long wait another day or two or wait just wait give it time settle down let all the lunatics get out of the way and then we'll wiggle back in but hopefully and hopefully i'm praying that this does mean that comedy clubs will be able to start to reopen even if it's half capacity and because people will be sat in their seats and you have table service so who knows we could be back sooner than we think and i'll finally 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 after promising you this all this time be able to get up and start telling some start doing some stand-up which i'm promising and i've been writing like mad i have some really good stuff uh scribble scribbled in and uh came up with so i just can't wait to get out and test it but yeah guys that's gonna do it again i have ran over my time and i apologize because i've tried to keep this down in 10 minutes i do want to make them longer but again camera only records for so long so soon enough i'll be getting guests on here very very soon i'll have the podcast on the podcast and sites which i'm super excited about can't wait for that but yeah guys thanks so much for watching this has been another smack talk i'll see you at the same time same place be there good luck